Matt's kept us waiting for 30 minutes. No, she's so late, and now he just left. He's so late, and then he left. Did his How background change he? again? I think I think it's just a rotating background at this point. You know. Goes what happened to the one. bar? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, now that you say that, I'm honestly, so, so confused. The bar's over there now. Honestly, Bro. I have no idea. The bar's, the bar's over You're there. killing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, so two two little things. One really cool thing is that mm. Bush Mills has a Peaky Blinders prohibition whiskey that they did a collab with. Uh, okay. Bush Mills being the what we had as number 15, which I had as a duplicate, which I shared the the duplicate with my wife. And she discovered the Peaky Blinders Prohibition Bush Mills, mm. which is really cool. Um, mm. Now, the thing that's not so cool, but is also kind of cool, is that I'm not getting number 16. So if y'all want to do uh, 16 and 18 tonight, that would be cool. Or if y'all want to save on 16 and y'all could do it on oh. the rare occasion that Wait, will probably you... never happen where I'm not here. Uh <laughs> Did you just say they're not sending you 16? No, instead I'm getting a a, a three pack thing, one of their generic like mm. pick three, not pick three. So it's like forty five dollar value. Yeah. Um, but you'll so never bad. have sixteen. But you'll never have sixteen. I'll never have sixteen. The funny part though is they're like you could pick one of these like from the list. Here's the link, or we could give you a fifteen dollar off coupon. I'm like. Fifteen dollars, forty-five dollars. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, I'm surprised they didn't just like give you the bottle because the I'm pretty right. sure the bottle is like forty-five dollars on their site. You know, I don't. Think if I had known that, maybe I would have asked. It's, but, it's wow. probably did, was it an automated response or no? Uh, probably I not, but it was remember. probably like they they probably have a sheet in front of them that tells them what something went say. wrong. What yeah. can you they you give them? without having to get clearance yeah and a tasting box or 15 dollar off coupon is probably something within their power without mm -hmm. going to a manager yeah that makes sense uh, yeah that's yeah. how they do those things isn't it yeah mm, mm, mm. so mm. so good to so know wait you said a peaky blinders and uh, bush mills yeah here i have a link ash sent me a link to it oh, oh yeah copy Share text uh, uh yeah, yeah. But beforehand, I need to second. probably accept like the collaboration cheap thing. Cheap is all get out. I do. But yeah, Nat. I think Nat and I both really like Peaky Blinders, if I remember right. Do Peaky Blinders is a fantastic oh, show. Man. I should have restarted. I, have, I, I saw a uh, an interview. I can't remember which actress was being interviewed. I think it was like Scarlett Johansson or something. And in the interview was, of course. Um, uh, I'm forgetting his name. The guy who plays the main dude, um, Tommy Shelby. The uh, main man. What's his, what's his name? Oh man, what's his name? His name is Cillian Murphy. Cillian Murphy. So she was like, it was some girl. She was, I can't remember if it was Scarlett Johansson or not. But the she she was in a an interview with Cillian Murphy, and she was like, well, you know, there's only really two types of people. The, the people that love Peaky Blinders and the people who haven't seen it yet. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's a fantastic show. Like That I is what I've really heard. Don't to... spoil anything. It is it's on the a list to watch, show but I haven't seen it yet. that you should watch when your liquor cabinet is too full. <laughs> and then you must always have a bottle with you. It's just like the, what's that other show? Yellowstone. You, I still have not watched that. Both both shows, you must have a bottle of liquor, and mm. you're you got to be ready to be like, oh, okay, yep, we're taking a drink for that. That's rough, or that's hard. or you're just like yeah. it's like a it's social drinking, but with the show, <laughs> you know, you're drinking with the show, so that the, like the show's like, I'm going to show you some truths. You're going to have to drink through them. Dude. <laughs> now, I have heard from some people that there there. It, like Yellowstone has a few prequels uh, from or spinoff been... shows, right? And yeah. I have heard from some people that like the original Yellowstone is pretty good, but the prequels are apparently like 
phenomenal. Oh yeah. And like that's exciting. Ten times better. Is what I've heard. Of the prequels. Yeah, it's like 18, 1923, 18, it's some date. Yeah, you're right. It's mm. uh, 1800s. It's like 1853 or 1823 or 1863 or... 1883. 1880. I, I was going to say that one next. I know, you were close. <laughs> so, so 1883 got like a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and then, um, let's see, Yellowstone got an 84%. Oh, at 89%. Apparently, Google had it at 90, but when I clicked on it, it said 89 for the other one. The Yellowstone is like 84%, and 1883 is at 89%. So, okay. before I forget, because I bet this show has bad ratings, if you want to tell us, Eric, Superman and Lois Oof. is insanely oh, yeah. good. I cannot Actually, believe that that show is such a sleeper and no one knew about it. And it's probably because people are burnt out on superhero stuff. But this one is like, very much so. this one's not superhero stuff. I mean, obviously it's Superman, but the writing is incredible. It's not a superhero show. Now, I will say, I went and looked it up this morning when you told me about it. Yeah. And their rating's like 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh. See, I'm telling you, it's so, nuts. It's insanely it's, it's, good. And that's a pretty for a superhero CW show. That's pretty. The insane, thing, the, the biggest all. thing I said to my wife was that these writers are flexing. They are showing us oh. that I can. Oh, Ash can confirm it's super great. These writers can write an appealing storyline for both teenage drama that's realistic and adult drama that's realistic at the exact same time, and then also sprinkle in a tiny bit of super, uh, superhero stuff which like somehow is the best you've ever seen like one of my favorite action scenes of all time is in the matrix when neo is getting pummeled by uh agent smith in the train station he's going really really yeah. fast right they did that scene better and i was like oh my god i need to rewatch that like five times I, how, how do you do that scene better they did it better like i mean he, superman is him it, to be fair superman is him and but, him but that's is like superman. The, the thing that was so that is so satisfying to me is that they they with superman and lois they are proving that they can on a tv show level make irl dragon ball z like fights now and i'm not asking for dragon ball z irl but the fighting i'm like this is this is this is like what it would be this if what you Dragon Ball Z was real, and it's they just so need good. to do it now. It's so good. I don't know if we want it real, but no. you know, I don't know if they can solve the hair problem. Bro, you've seen you've seen Dragon Ball Evolution, no, or what is it? Was one, Ball the one with the yeah, I remember seeing them though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a. Uh, no. It's probably yeah, they're gonna they're for, gonna have a lot of difficulties trying to live action any. Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. They would need to do like Dragon Ball, like no transformations. <laughs> Speaking of dragging some balls, what are we drinking, y'all? Wow. That was quite the segue. Um, <laughs> well, we have today, we're continuing our journey on the Flaviar for at least a few more, a few more episodes. We really want to like push through and get this, this one out of the way. Of course, you know, Anthony doesn't have 16. We did 17 last week. This week is 18. Shoo! All right. We're not playing today, right? We're not we're not doing we're not doing no guessing games today, right? We're okay. just we're going to figure this out. No, yeah, I'm we'll asking. Figure it out I'm not together. telling. I'm asking. I'm we'll not figure telling. We'll out, oh, figure it out together. However, doing? I would say Are we doing 18? You should Yes, 18. Are y'all doing 16 or y'all saving that for a rainy day? Rainy day. Let's save it for a rainy day. Yeah. I also think it would be a fun one to try with another uh, whiskey. So 16, for anybody who doesn't know, and for Nat and Anthony here, like is a Japanese whiskey. And so it may come into play when we do our first Japanese whiskey in the show, I think. We did have one other Japanese whiskey, but it was very, very different. Um, this one is a more typical Japanese. Oh, now, unfortunately, the little vial 
gives away the one piece of information that I think would have been fun for y'all to guess. Apologies. But if you don't look at the vial while you're pouring it, you can try to guess what type of whiskey. What not? So don't look at this vial, yes. but guess what it is? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's sorry. A, what are we doing? I got distracted I by a dirty glass. Is. Try to try to guess what type of whiskey this is without pouring it out of the vial. No, 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 no. Pour it in your glass. Don't look at the okay. vial. Okay. Delay of game. Uh, my glasses smell bad, even though they look very clean. I think it's Irish. I don't know what Scottish. does that. Now I'm like used to it, and I don't think it smells bad anymore. Oh, huh. I'm gonna guess Scottish. I'm gonna guess Scottish. Okay. We'll wait for Anthony a little bit on that one. Oh wow, that watch. smells really good. Okay. You like that? Interesting. I, 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 I have a, a very fun uh, conversion that I think we're starting to see in Anthony of what type of whiskey will for end up being sure. his favorite. No, get out of town. And it's going to be totally <laughs> different than what I think he thinks it will be. Rah. It's going to be great when I finally sit down with like 20 different whiskeys and we we bring a bunch to the table and we go, what is our Thank favorite you. whiskey? Or we do a top 10 where we rank our like Tap Haven's top 10, you know, mm. that would be a fun episode too. But, um, Eric, wait, Anthony, have you guessed yet? What, is, what do you, where do you think this is from? I just poured it in my Glen for the first time. Not just time. where, what type of whiskey? Oh. Although, although you did, you did, where did it's, you say? Isn't it the same thing? Isn't like for you? It does yes. smell okay. like I want to say it's a single malt, and I'm thinking that Nat is right and that it is Irish. No, I said it's Scottish. Oh, yeah, it's Scottish because of that that peat cut at the at the very beginning. That's that's Scottish. Well, I'm gonna hope. That I said Irish for a reason and not because I'm dumb. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick with that. Well, okay. uh, unfortunately, it's Scottish. Ah, Damn right, <laughs> it was a dumb mistake. A, this is a Scotch whiskey, so this of is the is. naked malt. Naked the malt. Naked malt. The naked malt. It smells like a Scotch whiskey, man. That would be it, another it does fun a little one. Bit, however, if, much sweeter. Yeah. Guess guess the ABV. Like I already saw it, so we can't do it, but. Is it 115? No, 86. 86? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hold on. Okay. Hold, oh, wait, 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 wait before. Wait. Did you already put it? Anthony. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, Anthony. Okay. Anthony. Anthony did. There has to be a punishment. Shun the non believer. We have to do I'm a sorry. Punishment next Rewind. Time. Clip that. You both were like this. I, I, well, <laughs> both of you. Got baited, dude. You got baited. I it's thought okay. about it. I thought about it. Cheers to episode 31. My Cheers to episode yeah. 31. Cheers, bitches. <laughs> well, you can't say certain words mm. in the first 30 minutes. That is... the Okay, okay. Cool note about this whiskey. Because I think it is unique mm. in a way that we have not seen on the podcast before. This whiskey has an entirely different nose than taste. For sure. Like that taste is interesting. It is so much different. The, the, the nose. Is that? So just, just to kind of give some examples of like what I'm thinking here on the nose, I'm getting a little bit of that peat, but I'm getting like caramel. I'm getting dark brown yep. sugars, like burnt dark brown, brown sugar, almost like a molasses type of smell to it. Maybe some, uh, like black cherries. I can see the black cherry because it's reminiscent almost of a warhead. Yeah. And then when I actually taste this, everything changes into this leathery, smoky, like smoked leather. Chocolatey baby. Yeah. Like I get chocolate off the top. Like I get like a sweet, like almost cherry chocolate off the top of it i get like dark dark chocolate like it yeah. wrapped in a non-confectionary cherry it's definitely not non-confectionary yeah. Yeah, yeah this isn't like say. those cherry candies 
no. chocolate covered cherries you get for like Christmas. This is like a real fucking cherry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, so what what is the age of this thing? So we got the their site is very interesting. They have a bunch of double golds from the World Spirits Competition 2023-2024. Wow. They have a platinum as well in 2024. 94 points in the Ultimate Spirits Challenge. They were a finalist in 2023. They were top 50 world's most admired whiskeys in 2023. They got some of the international scotch awards. Is anyone getting like the most chocolatiest aftertaste ever? Uh yeah, I could I okay. could see that. It's it's more of that like it's bitter smoky, bitter. Smoky. Yeah. Like but I Wow. I don't want to give the impression that it's sweet no, it's not chocolate. Like a, no, it's not. It is it like is a baking f- chocolate. Yeah, it's not a happy chocolate. Like you don't yeah. buy this off like a shelf and then eat the bar while you're driving home. No. Oh. Funny enough, if you've ever been to a place that roasts uh, like their cacao mm-hmm. se- seeds, smells exactly like that. It's like that, like that dark bitterness, not sweet, like tangy almost. Mel goes to this place uh, for our seasoning now that like they do wholesale um, wholesale seasoning, but they also do those Turkish delights like that were big in social media for a bit. Um, I think they do meats as well, but like she said, like walking in there is like a coffee drinker's heaven. And I was like, if, it was a coffee drinker's heaven and then like in certain sections she was like yeah like if you're a dude and you like strong smells you're gonna love it here yeah and i'm getting that from this yeah it has that leathery it it has like a cowboy smell Mm -hmm. you know i usually don't like how scottish scotch whiskeys come back and try and punch you in the face for even trying to sip at it. And like the the bite's still there, obviously because my mouth is like watering and I'm trying to grip myself through it, but it's not as like, it's not as icky. If that makes any sense. It's not icky. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's honestly pretty pleasant. I think it's a little, it's a little sweet. Stunted at the 40% ABV for me. Mm-hmm. I would want to see this cl- closer to like 10, 105 proof, I think. Would be like a sweet spot. Mm. Where me. where do you where do you see that flavor profile becoming more prominent? Because already right now I'm like, there's a burn, but it's like So I think it, with the higher proof, we're actually gonna draw out a little bit more of the wood notes Mm. and so i expect that it to be a little creamier maybe a little bit more of that caramel note from the nose pulling through Mm -hmm. in the flavor and then i also expect the cherry note to be more present for me because what i would expect obviously that's all conjecture right i expect more of the wood to be pulled in you know i know what it is what What is is it? it tastes better here because i now live in like the average altitude of scotland it's true yeah that's true so now now scotches are actually tasting how they're meant to taste you've got to work in your scottish accent well, you got to get in, in there. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do that one. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, do you can? <laughs> you know, I don't know what I, I don't know what accents I can do, but I know when I can't. <laughs> That's d- the, the easiest one to do for to get yourself into the Scottish vibe is to use Scottish, like Scottish. You don't you don't do the T. You, you do, do the, the tea, stop. dude. No, you, you, you do, do the like tea. Scottish. 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 You say you say Scottish. I'm gonna go. No, with, I'm gonna have to go with Nat on this one. Scottish. 
don't fuck with me with this accent, man. I will Spanish say people in the comments. I will say I think uh, I think Matt has How like How do you pronounce Scottish? <laughs> Scottish. Scottish. You've got to say the T. I'm, look. Matt I knows might, what he's talking about. <laughs> I've watched a lot of BBC. And have you met his sister? <laughs> She's too, she does it too. She does it too. Everybody in the family does it. We're all look. I'm not going to say that we're all good at accents. You are actually. I will say you are. That we That's are, why you should be a voice least, actor. But voice acting is hard to get into. Up. It's hard to get into. You have to. It's even harder now because well, there's like a bit of huge wave of people like getting the, into it. Yeah. Okay. I will say Google just failed. Miserable. What? What did you try I, and Google it and have it pr- pronounced so Scottish I, in a Scottish I wanted, accent? No, 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 no. I wanted to. I, I just asked it. How do Scottish people pronounce Scottish? The word Scottish. And the top result gives you that Scottish. like Google Scottish. translate bubble. No. And it says Scottish people. And then when you press play, it's like Scottish people. <laughs> I could have told you that. And I was like, I was Google, you, you, you lost the plot. You're asking an AI to do some a lot of leaks and cognitive <laughs> understanding of what you're actually trying to get to. Hundred percent fair, for sure. But I'll I will say this um, because Anthony is at a high, does it actually affect the flavor of a whiskey depending on the altitude on the tasting so, end, not the brewing end, but the sorry, not the distilling end, but okay, the, the brewing end and distilling end for sure. Um, okay. Mostly because pressure is different. So really what you have to look into is how much does that pressure differential affect Mm -hmm. the flavor? Gotcha. Now, I guarantee that it does on some to some degree. Now, arguing how quantifiable that is, I don't know. I don't know. That's where somebody would have to do far more science than I know to figure out. But, but I, flavor wise, but definitely like, like different altitudes, you, dude, mm-hmm. the, different okay, pressures no, are going to affect it. Get this. Mm. The altitude makes such a big change on all chemistry. So mm-hmm. everything happening that the temperature difference in boiling point of water is anywhere from five to 15 degrees. Yeah. J- just going up a couple thousand feet. Yeah. A hundred percent. So it, I agree like that. And that's what I'm saying. A hundred percent. It affects it. I just don't know how quantifiably. So it doesn't, if you can't point to like a specific one. Yeah. Like, does it make yeah. it sweeter? Does it make it smokier? Does it make it? I, I don't But know. get this. I used to hate scotch. I lived in Georgia. Now I'm apparently starting to like scotch. Also when Eric had me try the best scotch in the world, in my opinion, we were oh. on the top of a mountain. Uh, we were. I'm, like I have a feeling that six thousand feet, you may we have been colored by the memory. Well, no. well also no. there are two things. No, I trudged through like mud that, and shit um, to get to the spot. So yeah, you're you I, you're literally making my point. But there are two <laughs> things about being on top of a cold mountain: one, the pressure differential, but also the temperature differential. It's so cold. So mm. having a cold scotch. So when so this is something that's super interesting always to me when as things get colder and they start to compress their molecule molecules together Mm -hmm. they get less sweet Mm. this is why ice cream if you were to let it sit out and melt is sweeter in its liquid form and oftentimes way too sweet but when you freeze it the molecules condense it's like it is less sweet now this is one of the reasons that if you have a super sweet whiskey, a lot of people like it on ice better. It actually makes it less sweet. It brings out some of the other flavors, things like that. Scotches and stuff like that can be done in the same way. Additionally, your taste buds react differently to cold substances than hot substances. So, Having something cold versus hot is going to totally change your experience of that scotch. Now, I will say for Anthony's uh, to kind of not like throw out Anthony's point of like 
the scotch was what was there versus like being in a cold environment. We also had that scotch when we got back down to normal altitudes and temperatures. So okay. Like, that and scotch is also it. a really great scotch. Okay. Okay. I was like, about to say, I was like, was it colored by your experience? No, that is, so the scotch that we had. And by normal altitude, was, he means we are on a smaller mountain. Yes. Ah. Yes. So <laughs> the <laughs> scotch that we had was also one of the most famous scotch companies, which was Lagavulin. A lot of people live Ooh, by the Lagavulin 11 year. really good. Yeah. And of course, as most people probably know by now, Nick Offerman has been doing, he's on his fourth release now with them. His newest one being an 11 year Caribbean cask. Caribbean rum cask finish, which sounds really good. Sounds really good. Um, if I was a Scotch man, yeah, it is, they are scotches, and Nick Offerman yeah, likes his not. scotches yeah. very peaty and very smoky. I so. like peat. I like smoke and peat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I looked down at my dogs, just like he got his bottom teeth removed oh, <laughs> because, <no. laughs> and so like every now and then, like he'll forget that his tongue's not in his mouth. <laughs> 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 just be like peeking it's like and it's cute like it's like it's just like a little tiny like it's the tip of his tongue so i look down he's doing like the mlem it's like <laughs> so fucking cute oh my god Dude, ash over here being a uh a um a, a knight of our channels oh for sure <laughs> for uh, sure oh our our dog yui she uh her mouth isn't big enough to cover her teeth so if you are <laughs> below her mouth line or she's looking up you can see her her teeth yeah and they're a bit jacked up so we call her our little crack baby <laughs> she... you leave that baby alone, <laughs> it's, adorable. Leave that baby alone. it's adorable oh my god all right but no you can't get in my lap because then you're gonna you know what never mind so I guess while we kind of deliberate on this whiskey, mm -hmm. we have we have some clerical work to go over and kind of an interesting topic, uh, which will kind of go into the, my past week in a lot of ways. Oh, so I don't know if y'all have heard, but a recent video was done kind of breaking down some of the extremely shady adobe practices you mean like making all of your stuff go to their ai out uh like cert or algorithm. algorithms for generating their, their, new one stuff. of the many things not their algorithm um, sorry going into their data set to be farmed into their uh algorithm LLM. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah that is yeah. one of the many things i think that one's pretty scum but even scummier than that has been how they have essentially tricked a bunch of people into yearly contracts yeah, without man. ever actually stating that it's a yearly contract until you try to cancel. So, for example, you were to sign up for Adobe and say, oh, I want to pay this amount per month. Then you go in three months later and you're like, okay, I'm not really using Adobe that well. Let me cancel. You have to pay out the rest of your contract to be able to cancel. So you might have to pay 800 bucks bro, or something like that. Depending there, on what you signed up for. There is a civil lawsuit right now about all of this stuff. But they, there have recently been a number of things that have been uh, coming out about Adobe. They're, now, getting, they're coming under a lot of fire recently. Rightfully so, in my opinion. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that they kind of have a monopoly on a few parts of the market. No, they don't. Sure. You don't need Adobe at all. So there's so there many other options. They are the industry standard for for a no. Those are just people that think they're saving money set. by not switching. Yes, Anthony. Those are just totally, those are so, just people that Anthony, are dumb. I agree. Let me let me state I agree. this. There are uh, uh, there are things that Adobe does not have a monopoly on. For sure. But there are a few pieces of the market that do not have comparative alternatives. there's no competition for them and so in for example in what after effects that's not true davinci resolve davinci resolve doesn't do 90 percent of what after effects does 
After Effects cool. is an entirely different <laughs> beast. Started typing. And here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I have done, the, done a lot of research on this because I've started working Fusion now. And After Effects is just a different beast than what Fusion is. Fusion is very good for like motion graphics and things like that. The node editor does a lot of cool stuff, but it simply doesn't do a lot of what After Effects does. Now, for me, I don't need everything that After Effects does for what I'm going to be using it for, for the most part. So for me, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion will be enough. So that's that is what yeah, there's no, there's DaVinci Resolve Fusion there's Natron there's Blender there's Node none of those even come close to the capabilities of After Effects I doubt it L I highly so, doubt no, it I, I, Anthony, Anthony, I am Anthony, telling you Anthony. nothing comes close but, uh, but even when it comes Cavalry, to even when it comes to that Cavalry even when it comes is to nowhere that, close Anthony doubt it even when it comes F to it that, out. Let's say that let's say that any of these tools are at least one to one with Adobe, right? There is a certain gravitas to the name of Adobe with certain comp I'm not saying all, but certain companies are like that is the industry standard. We work with this. We work within this cloud because it works with our infrastructure. And oftentimes that is usually the Adobe infrastructure. Unfortunately. Just to put it out there. Let me let me put it in a different way then. That's that's a little less arguable. A monopoly oftentimes is defined by having more than a fourth of the market under its share. Right? Adobe for all of its processes or applications that it offers mm -hmm. has more than 60% of that space in the yeah. professional world. So even even if you like could argue that these other applications are, are usable, for the most case, at least by those standards, Adobe is considered a market monopoly in a lot of ways. Now, things like Photoshop don't really have really good alternatives. GIMP is GIMPed at best. <laughs> It's uh, called GIMP. What are you talking well, about? Thing. You don't know programs. What is it? Where's I've my used, iPad? I've used GIMP. No, not GIMP. GIMP. I don't Adobe. use GIMP. Nope, there's something way better. Um, God, Ash uses it too. Affinity Design and Affinity Photo. Those are incredible applications. Affinity and is good. You don't Affinity need Photoshop. Is good. No. Affinity is good. You don't need Photoshop, but I think what really is the capstone of this entire argument because it's really not an argument i would love for there to be like less adobe because honestly they're making decisions that apple is making for their product line and we'll get into that later well, so the, i promise the thing you. Is, we'll talk about where, that but like where the argument let me finish let me kill it let me kill it i i would love for adobe to not have this gravitas of being them like they are it for certain for certain people and for certain companies, and they have found a way to rope big companies into agreements that allow them to continue to operate the, the way that they operate. So that so they they are making very questionable uh, moves with AI and creative creative work. That being said. I don't I can't I don't see a contender right now who I could say one to one could take Adobe on for So the thing is you don't need a one to one contender and that's the mistake that people make when they talk about stuff like this and when they talk Are about you things like, a company? like No like there what is it it's not AutoCAD is AutoCAD there's it's AutoCAD the, the big software that people yeah. use to simulate the whole world right and yeah every engineer you talk to will say that it is total shit but it's the only thing that does these things and it and it works you know but doesn't blender do the same thing that's what i'm getting at yeah so yes these really old pieces of software can do more things mm -hmm. but people go and make new pieces of software that do the primary things people actually want to do better mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there are better alternatives when you're not going to try to match them up perfectly for every single thing that exists. It's like, if you go right. and take this alternative and you compare it to what the big name one has, people will often be like, 
well, it's actually better in this one because they're smaller company. They're making a new thing and they're doing exactly what I they would, want. I would hazard to agree, Anthony, that yes, it does not take a one to one comparison for you to beat out a competitor, like a, a company like this in a field. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, um, I used to be a notability like stan like i would be like there's no other note taking app on an on the ipad that even comes close good notes who right and then and then notability started like i guess smelling its own shit or something and they released a they released a a patch that completely made their app unusable for a certain number of people. And I don't know what happened. I think it was like across the entire user st- um, user uh, base. But I looked at all the reviews and people were like, dude, like I literally woke up today and I could not use this app anymore because of the decisions that they had made. And, it's, and I don't know if it was like a, like a, mishap or they just didn't have anybody who was developing a fix for a patch or they just rolled something out that was bad but it was three months of that and they were like no people will stay because we are the goat we can take however long we need to but it's whatever we'll get to it i can't tell you how many people were like i'm switching to good notes because it's been four months now and i'm still unable to use this app so I am I am an example of me seeing something being wrong with an app and switching over to something that may not have the same functionalities, but at least co- accomplishes the same goals and has other niches that th- that it fills. I just want there to be an actual, a clear standout for those kinds of comparisons whenever i'm looking into okay i don't want to use photoshop where do i go right now i feel like it's a wild west kind of vibe when you leave photoshop right or well maybe not photoshop but like other apps like it like after effects i have nothing i had no idea what after effects looks like outside of after effects it's fair i mean the one thing that i would say that i think like on one hand Anthony, you're entirely correct. Mm-hmm. There are things in other applications that dominate how it's done in Adobe. And I entirely agree. On the other hand, I think one of the biggest time spends in a professional setting, and this is not true for a, in my opinion, for somebody doing this as a hobby or somebody doing this like minimally. Mm-hmm. But once you get to like, professionally and you're managing larger projects and things like that adobe still has one aspect to it that makes it better than any other comparator the only alternative may be some of the apple development lines because Mm. of the cohesion between apps because right now you can create something in after effects that was based off of something that you did in Adobe Flash that uses things from Adobe Acrobat and PDF that have its own animations that you then put animations on or do post effects processing on in After Effects, which seamlessly goes into Adobe Premiere as its own editable track. All with but, no overhead. No, but, but what he didn't mention is that Adobe crashed like 15 times while you're trying it, to do it, that. I was, I was going to say, I was like, there is definitely some user error that goes it, along that's with the, that. That's the thing. All the yeah. professionals that use it, they're like, it crashes all the time. Just nonstop not, crashing. It is not good. I am not, <laughs> I am not arguing that it's experience and that is good. Mm-hmm. I'm merely arguing that no other application does that affinity design and affinity photo do that that's two to apps some out of degree, a suite of there might be more i'm saying the degree, they do. but yeah. not to the level that adobe does it's just nowhere close black magic does it with their cameras and their software and stuff like that this I, would be fine if be adobe great. didn't have 40 different applications doing this that are all seamlessly integrated with each other right like the level to which adobe has integration 
nailed. You sound like a uh, Adobe fanboy. All oh, I'm hate saying, it. I hate it. I'm just you saying. You don't sound like you hate it. You sound like you love it. No, 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 no. Mm. I'm just saying there's a reason that they own 60% of the market. But why did, I, I mean, this reason. Not gonna, I mean, I tried to get you not to use Adobe in the past, and every time you chose Adobe over the alternative that I presented with, uh, to you. I mean, here's the thing. I have now done. Calling you out. <laughs> I have now done. Here's, here's one thing that I will say <laughs> I, I can get work done much quicker in Adobe than. Because you any know Any other it thing that yeah, I've done. And yeah, I, I know used how it use for it. a long time. Yeah. Uh, but even to that extent, there are things in After Effects that you can do that would simply take like <laughs> nightmarishly long amounts of time. Ash. <laughs> Like it's the Adobe boy. <laughs> Go on, get into your clay house, Adobe boy. <laughs> hey. Hey, look, I'm putting Adobe out. I have and my subscription is no longer no longer active. You're late for your for your gig at the mall, you strip cop. I, hear a puppy? <laughs> I am I just think oh, it's so funny. God. So it's it's just funny because uh my side of the internet that I have observed for years now has been everybody under the sun leaving Adobe for better apps constantly, like year over oh, year over year. But that's stream. not for true sure. in the market. It the market doesn't These are show professionals. That data. These aren't professionals. No, no, no. Time out. The time out. Statistics Slow down. Slow down. Still there. No, no, no. You are talking about the large overarching companies who are in control of what people use and what they do not the actual professionals themselves that have greater influence over time. So just because something is away right now, statistically, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that there hasn't already been a massive shift and that something's going out the door. It's just I a generational thing. Been, I think there have been definite shifts in the past few years. It's like away from standards. If you had someone like Ren from the Corridor crew, Go and start mm. a studio, and like all the guys from the corridor crew, I bet Ooh, I I, I'm, I'm quite certain most crew. of those guys. I do not support. The I can't. I don't know I'm about their controversies and up. stuff, but like I haven't watched them in years. But okay, they <laughs> there's a lot of guys there that proved that they didn't need Adobe over time, and they're mm. smaller. And so as people like them grow and start their own companies or whatever, they'll initialize it without Adobe instead of embedding it in adobe i i eric if i could if i could <laughs> i know you have i know you have a rebuttal i know you do no no, no. I, if i mean the, I, I don't, don't think anything yeah, he's saying yeah. is entirely wrong incorrect no he's not but like like I, think... I agree with everything you're saying but the market has not started shifting that way on a large scale yet. Or a large I'm saying it scale. won't. I'm saying it won't. That's fine. But the thing is, this is one of those ways that when I the, think true masters of their craft will stay away from Adobe. Yeah, and, and what that, I'm trying to I think get that at is the is true that vein that you're trying to get you, at. You, it's it's an argument where bringing up those current statistics is not actually helpful. I think this. I, it's like it doesn't help the data's. argument, is what I'm saying. No, data is important, but context yes. and thinking about it, why in? that data is what it is. Did I what? Oh, I thought you zoomed in for a second. I oh no, like, I was fixing something that had fallen down. Hold on, I'm being called. It was a Get manual in. zoom. It was a manual zoom. Yeah, again. Oh my God. But yeah, all I'm saying is that yes, in the right context, statistics are important, but when you're looking at what we're talking about those statistics are representing massive companies with a ton of employees that just haven't changed over time and and that the change the initial change won't make a big change in statistics i totally agree yeah, yeah i totally agree it's all about the leaders of the space that being said I do need to go ahead and do a load of laundry and switch. I will be right back. But I agree in the sense that we are encounter. I feel like, and again, we'll get into this in a second because I really want to go ahead and dig into another point that I'm going to make about um, something that I'm going to probably do soon regarding phones. But um, yeah, yeah, 
like we'll we'll talk about it but like i really do feel like there it is a changing of the guard in terms of just like people have been lazy about keeping innovation and their end user as their only measure um like in their forefront like i don't i I don't think that companies like Adobe are going to be able to keep up unless they make definitive shifts in the next coming like 10, 20 years. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Adobe is going to get any better until somebody eats up enough of their market share. Oh, but, but I feel like everybody's like, everybody has their number now. Again, but this is, this is kind of where I was going with the statistics portion. Yeah. Adobe isn't going to change until, until they get sh- until they get booted into like 50% or like 40%. Even much less than that. Yeah. Bro, did the wife just request you to do the lottery? <laughs> We're podcasting, man. Yes. What are you doing? Of course she can you do did. it. Of course you did. I'll be right back. We had to take a little quick commercial break anyway. We need you guys can go ahead and trace We need more wife support games. on this podcast. We need more wife support now. Where's Bonvi? We bon have v? wife support, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir. <laughs> Playing volleyball. <laughs> Anyways, Eric, no. <laughs> go do your laundry. Go do your laundry. I'll be right back. It'll be like five seconds. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Two things. So, One, Eric, hurry up and talk about RuneScape. Oh no! <laughs> all the runes. No, I, I, I. I'm kidding. Actually, two. If you haven't heard a very great quote, anybody and everybody, by I think it was, um, it wasn't Mike Tyson. He bit the ear off of Evander Holyfield. Evander That's Mike Tyson. No. He, yeah, he bit the ear off of Vander Holyfield. Yeah. Vander Holyfield was married to someone, and at one point he learned that she didn't believe he had what it took to become the champion. He immediately divorced her because he understood that if my partner does not believe in me, it won't happen. It can't happen. So I can't succeed with you if you don't change your mind, and she didn't change her mind. So he had to go. Hey, that's fair. Just and saying. I will say, just, just, just for, for Anthony, I guess, any the audience, uh, as y'all may have know, the layout and stuff has changed on YouTube because now I'm going through mm-hmm. and I'm using uh, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. I'm working on a new intro. Um, so no intro for the last episode, maybe an episode or two until I get some time to flesh out that intro fully. But uh, There's a new layout for like the... VOD, you mean? Yeah, you'll um. notice that there's some drop shadow, the uh, DaVinci collab filter kind of uh, does a lot of that, so it's a little bit different. Mm. Uh, I kept it as similar as possible, but no intro and no intro music on the last one. Uh, additionally, the text rendering in Krita is absolutely abysmal, so the... Uh, the text on the thumbnail is quite not quite where I would like it, but uh, I'm going to keep working through different programs. Krita just is terrible at text. It doesn't render it correctly when it um, when you use it. <laughs> I googled something and I did not like the results. I gave up very quickly. <laughs> oh no! What were you googling? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, so. RuneScape. Yeah. So I have, uh, I just did one of my first, uh, hey, Ash is asking for the Google. The people want to know. No, no, no. It's just, it's just, it's just a, what do you call it? Um, Bad journalism. You know, every uh, sports figure that has any sort of popularity has obviously beaten women. Like, that's just what they do. Right. Oh. Like, <laughs> like they all get accused of that. That happened to Kobe yeah. Bryant. That happens to like, <laughs> that happens to most of them. It's actually, yeah. it's bad. But yeah. Anyways, uh, put physically dominant uh, male personas with very strong personas in places of power, and you have one of opportunities well the problem is they actually do it or they get accused of doing it yeah and so it's like well how do you don't know like unless there's like exact real proof it's like okay did it actually happen or is someone trying to take advantage of someone that's popular and has money like what's 
but it is uh but it, yeah it happens to every one of them because <laughs> that's what happened again that's what happens when you put a physically powerful male in a place of power yeah either they do it or they get accused of doing it yeah it's weird they have yeah. to be like really careful yeah they really do that's why you had that i don't know if you've seen it there was the um a Thai kickboxer guy. He was in the UFC or something like that. And he had just won a match and he, they were asking him to take a picture with the, uh, the cage girls, you know, on either side or, or one side or something like that. And he was like super hyped up. So he like grabbed her and pulled her in and like did like this type of thing and took a picture. And there was this huge controversy about him doing it. So the next time he wouldn't even take a picture with her. She like chased him. He was like, no, no picture. Oh my God. No picture. He like runs out and he runs off the mat. He's like, I'm not playing with it. Like I got in trouble for it the first time. Done. Dude. Well, so that's what's insane. It's so like, as you know, I've been watching Smallville, right? And while watching it, I'm seeing things that are so horribly unrealistic, like things that never occur in real life. But there are things that I know certain types of people growing up will watch and they think that's how I do that because there are people that will do those things that make no sense and then they get in trouble for it sometimes if it's like bad enough like it's real weird so now that Nat is back uh RuneScape he's, so... he's muted he's muted uh He's super ah, I but, was but, saying the... I was saying Mel said sorry. She didn't know that I was in the podcast. Oh. She just thought I was in the room. Oh, I'm, I'm just spending teasing. a lot of time in here. Well, we don't so, even know if it's the same room with how often you change it. It's the same room. It's not the same color. I, I no, it is the same color. No, dude, the last room was like pitch black. Hold on. Hold on. You have it's a because, like the lighting changes. No, uh. Uh-uh. Yes, you painted it black. The... I swear to God, you had a room where you painted the walls like black. It's white in here. Was there it's another okay. room that you painted? No, it's the I same room. I swear you told me you were changing it's a rooms. Room. I'm in the same room. But the other room is painted black. The other room is also white. There is a painted black paint. room. It just got painted. Oh, it just got painted. I was like, it, it was, used to it be was, a black room. It was black room when I, when I was there. You was, you're lying. I'm not in a black but room. But you though. were. Well, not anymore. I was. That's what I said. This was a, this was a year ago. It was well, not that long ago. It was Whatever. like a it month was ago. The, it was literally like a month ago. Ash told me to come back. She says that you're talking about alpha males. You you disgust me. All all of you. Disgusting. <laughs> we're not talking about alpha males. What do you? No. So speaking of alpha Embarrassing. males. Embarrassing. Wow. Oh my God. Nat, what do you think about this whiskey? Oh, shit. We haven't rated it yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay um i will give this a 3.8 3.8 it is good like this is one of this is a good scotch i won't say it's one of my favorites because i actually really like the peat um flavor that comes through with really strong scotches um that being said the actual experience of like tasting it and having to go through like the sweetness of it that chocolate aftertaste is real is so far up my lane it's so it's so nice um i shouldn't have said it like that jesus christ um but in you end out of, uh, out of the way. I will say that this thing is fantastic. Um, I would not daily drink this, but I would definitely gift this. I would definitely give this to somebody who was like into scotches but wants a new experience. Or if I wanted, if there was somebody who was starting with scotches and they were like didn't know what the um, what the genre entailed, just to be like, hey. Scotches, yes, are peaty, muscly boys, but they're also a little mysterious. Like they can get, they can throw, they can throw you some left and right hooks out out of, out of nowhere. So, I'll give this a three point eight. I would gift this. I would not daily drive this. Fantastic, honestly. 
really good. Nice. Anthony, what do you think about it? So, uh, <clears throat> mm, quite good. Quite good. <laughs> quite good. Translates to seven out of ten. Seven out of oh, ten. Oh, okay. What? Well, it's really yeah. good, man. That's act- I mean, there's so much good smelling, good flavoring, very complex. Like Eric, I know what he is. Tasting all the things. I'd pay seventy bucks for that. Oh, I had to say okay. what pay- I- I'd pay forty. Like this is really good. I mean, it smells good. St- like it's it's con- and it's constant. You're a co- you're a Scotch man. Like it's not. Anthony. It's not suddenly bad. It's not suddenly I can't smell it anymore. Like it's. Anthony, I think you're a Scotch man. Maybe it has to be malted. Maybe it needs to be a malted Scotch, but I think I'm pretty sure you're a Scotch man. I, dude, I used to. I mean, hated Scotch a lot. Really. Because that is fascinating to me. I th- I'm I don't know if I've had a scotch that's not malted that I like. It might have been the Nick Offerman one, maybe, but that was because it was so smoky and it had good peat. But like, I think I don't like generic, random, off the wall scotches. But I don't really know because I don't keep track of things because I'm not I'm not a tracker. <laughs> mm. Should get on that notion. Uh, this this might actually be a solid replacement. For monkey shoulder and a lot of mixed drinks for me. Really? Also a blended malt scotch. Um, similar in a lot of ways, but I feel like this just has a little bit more oomph to it. It has a little bit more complexity. Um, <laughs> I don't... What's happening? Know. And then he Anthony, has you good there, bud. new information, I guess. No, 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 no. Eric, keep going. <laughs> we'll deal with this after you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot more complexity here. Um, the nose is really nice. The flavor is really nice. I think my only downside to it is that I wish it had a little bit more proof to it. Mm. I feel like a little bit more just... Keep going. Focus. <laughs> I will do this. I'm I will trying. do this. You keep going. Uh, I will so handle this. You keep going. A, a little bit more complexity. I and... I think this might be a nine out of ten now. <laughs> a- Anthony, uh, I'm trying. Eric, focus. I'm trying. <laughs> I know focus. you are. Focus harder. The blood <laughs> is focus. leaving his brain. Oh yeah. So so. Honestly, I think a higher proof version of this with a little bit more age would be a a, a superb whiskey. Now, that kind of leaves me where would I put this one? I think it's right below a daily driver for me and the scotches. There are just some scotches that I really like a lot more. Like, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put this above my daily driver scotch, which would be like um, something like an Oogdal or something like a Nick Offerman. Mm -hmm. uh, finish which are definitely higher rated than this but it it really has some nice depth to it i think i'd put it at a four it's right below a daily drinker for me but i think it very well could replace a um monkey shoulder as a blended scotch that i use to mix with especially something like a rusty nail cocktail or something like that might be absolutely wonderful Mm. you know i think the rusty nail is a terrible idea because i tried to reuse one the other day and it broke off on me and i'm never doing that again so i can't imagine that cocktail tastes good at all so (laughs) keep uh, getting away with this I'm serious. This really happened over the weekend. So the, the rusty nail is essentially an old fashioned, except it's made with drambuie, which is a Drambui. liqueur Dude, made okay. from Scotch whiskey and honey. Ooh, that sounds better. You know, I don't think we had a chance to go there, but there's a place near me, Eric, that has uh, old fashioned that they smoke it for you. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really should probably start planning a visit to Asheville. Let me know when. 
So we can yeah, go. I need to start doing we'll that. We'll all just bunk at uh, let Anthony's me, place. Let me put it into my We got plenty of room. Hold on. We got four yeah. showers. We were thinking about trying to go up during New Year's again. Hell yeah. <laughs> so I, Ooh, I, I, I don't, don't know if we've made that work yet. That would be sick. But how do y'all feel about doing a New oh, Year's? Oh, just like out in the trip? mountain air. That's a good yeah. idea. Oh, there's, New Year's? there's also yeah. like really big New Year's celebrations on the ski mountains. You can like ski at night. Or snowboard at night and stuff. Too. Oh, we don't do that. We don't do that. You don't uh, have to fast that fast wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that fast wood work. Mm -mm. You you're not a fan That's of Johnny a Tsunami, enough. dude. I'm a big fan of Johnny Tsunami. So what do you mean you don't do that fast wood work? <laughs> I mean, I gotta keep breaking in my snowboard, so I'll be there. Did you do you know that like his dad is actually um, uh, the main bad guy of Mortal Kombat One? <laughs> the guy the with voice? the big chest. That's funny. No, 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 no. His sorry, his grandpa. His grandpa is the main bad guy from <laughs> from Mortal Kombat One. Oh yeah, I did know <laughs> Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung. Yeah, he's Shang the main Tsun. bad yeah. guy. From... <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> when I saw that movie, I was always like, mm. I've seen that guy I've seen before. Him. I've right seen next you to before. a girl in like tight purple clothing. Exactly. If I remember correctly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, Ooh. I can never unsee this. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Upcoming. All right. Let's go. I'm going to go ahead. Guy. And, um, plan. That guy. Trip to Asheville. Let's do it. New Year's Asheville trip. I will have just come back from India, so I will uh, I'll be able to tell all the stories. New Year's. Let me see if... We'll probably try to do the same thing. I'll just come after my I leave my parents' house. I'll just drive Fantastic. straight up to Asheville. Heck yeah. Fantastic. Wait, no, it's a, it's a lateral move. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Eric, you, actually, you know what? I feel like... Is that a wrap on the on the whiskey? Well, oh, the only thing other thing no that rating I would say from is Eric. pricing wise. Oh, I rated four 40. out of ten. Four out of ten. Oh, y'all don't like okay. this very much, weirdos. No, I don't. So I I like it. I just don't think it is a daily drinker for me. Same. Which would put it at five for me, or around a five. Because and I think there are other scotches that I like better for for like that scotch flavor. So. It just sits below those. So if I were to rate something like an Ardbeg Oogdal or something like that at a six, this is definitely below that. I would mm. rather drink something like a Redbreast 12 or something along those lines. I got to tell you guys, I literally had already picked this up. This is so much better than a Redbreast 12. Like leagues and bounds better than a red breast well yeah i i disagree <laughs> i disagree that's okay i mean this is where our tastes are misaligned yeah well you so know? the funny thing is because i the reason i thought about it was because i like mm, this kind of tastes like the cookie thing that eric likes to describe <laughs> Come to i me, don't Bill. taste cookie with this except on a very rare occasion when the moon is like non-existent because someone blew it up well let's go ahead and just try that real quick I'll but yeah this is a fairly inexpensive whiskey as well so the naked single malt i think it runs naked. at 40 dollars. did you say right? naked naked oh by the way why naked the, i hear you the, say the theming the heming the theming behind the heming oh my god the, the reaming behind Sorry. this sir <laughs> Uncalled for. So you can you can get this whiskey in your vicinity. This is like I'm sorry. $35. This is a 21 and up podcast. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is, unfortunately, because we're dealing with alcohol and stuff like that. Uh, it's an 18 plus podcast on Twitch. Uh, so if you're an 18, this won't even show up on your list. Just putting Incredible. it out there. So Incredible. Nothing I can do. Yeah, don't lie about your age, kids. I mean, it's adults. Bad. Obviously, really talking to adults. Obviously, talking to adults. Now, what are you drinking? I'm trying the red breast. You said that you can't taste. Mm, yeah, it looks red. <laughs> right? I was like, I was like, that's very red. What you got there? It's very red. I need another red breast. I actually finished mine. Did you finish? Because oh. I hate it. I was just oh. angry drinking it. <laughs> I was angry. You were angry chugging it. <laughs> <laughs> Get this oh shit God. off my shelf. 
I'm so tired of this goddamn whiskey. I Throws just, the I bottle just out can't. the window. No real. I just fucking can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. Yeah, it's just so gross. He starts hunting birds so because gross. he can't stand the sight of them. It's crow season oh right God. now. It's crow season. We got a bunch of turkeys, but it's not turkey season. Not till April. Mm. Yeah. Butter cookie. I love right it. off the top. I love it. Red breast twelve butter right cookie. Off the top. This would have been like a good time. Try that. Short like bread, wonderful. Right off there. Yeah. Oh. So That's actually really good. I, it Interesting. Is. The Red okay. Rust 12 is wonderful. Anyway. For me, at least. For my flavor palette. Anyway. So, uh, Anthony, what have you been playing this week? Yeah, Anthony. Because you freaking oh, drank Oh, I guess I us. have played multiple games. Um, okay. Here we go. Only because mm-hmm. I've been trying to like fix the stream and stuff like that. Uh, because single PC streaming worked many years ago when my graphics Bro. card was the new hotness now that it's... my graphics card is the old hotness it's <laughs> it's not so oldest good hotness oldest hotness yeah, it's, a, it's a struggle yes. man when i'm running off a, a 3070 laptop yeah so i i did play a little bit of wow but not enough um i'm looking forward to finishing the campaign but Bro. because we're not like trying to organize mythics or yeah, heroics or anything because there i don't have a group of people that's trying to be like let's go do you this have thing three yeah but have three there's people, nobody but have organizing s- a thing so like what there's I'm no time pressure you put a you didn't put a calendar invite you didn't do anything you're asking somebody else to put the work in for you no. hey to no. be fair most of my weekend no. i was i was <laughs> learning no. fusion and Da Vinci Resolve. That was literally it. I, I, I watched like twenty hours of videos. I did like twelve Eric, hours of this work. Is, Eric, this isn't your turn. I'm okay. playing. It's, it's Anthony's turn. I'm playing. Wow, <laughs> like it's a, like it's a, like it's a what? An aged wine. I'm aging it. Okay. I'm taking it nice and slow. I'm taking it like an adult. <laughs> Okay. Just kidding. Tucking that thing into bed. How's that going? I just, I just have so many gotcha. other things to do. Gotcha. Like, okay. I don't know. When I when I play right now, I just like level up alts. That's like pretty much it. I'm I don't I'm a... literally about to start pl- like leveling up my paladin alt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I have no reason to rush into getting geared up on my main, and that's what, I, I don't mind that at all. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep playing this like casually, and that's okay. I think it would be cool to play it very intensely, but I probably don't have time for that. Um, mm. I hear an echo, so I got a little distracted. Reeling it back in. It's probably me. Probably. You should be good now. So the other thing was that I played. Uh, so I've been trying to figure out how to set this up because there's a certain game that I like that is really good for just casual streaming and content because it's always different and always interesting. And that's Sea of Thieves. I know you hate it, Nat. Mm. But what's what's even what gives it more hate worthiness is that on PS5 it plays flawlessly. Of course it does. And not it's just flawlessly, but they did the like adaptive trigger stuff, which is insanely satisfying. It's so mm. nice to just feel the click and like it's just the the te- tactile hap- the tension. It's, yeah. It's so nice. So yeah. I have a question about that. Yeah. Is part of the reason that it's playing badly on PC right now because of it's being their ported over to PS- PS5? Yeah. I so Captain Falcor is a really great YouTuber and content creator, has a very good video on why they are very much likely working on Sea of Thieves 2. And I, from my professional experience, can vouch that it seems very likely that the Sea of Thieves dev team is a skeleton crew. It is not a full team. They recently started working with like one or two other companies, which may have been doing the PS5 port. They said they were working on certain other things like bugs and stuff. Obviously not. The amount of patches and content releases is so small that it seems very likely that they're working on Sea of Thieves 2 or like for Gen, you know, the new Gen. Um, but Captain Falcor outlines why that needs to be a secret because they would piss so many people off, apparently. Um, yeah. yeah. People, people 
don't like it when you work on things that aren't the game that yeah. they're currently enjoying. Yeah. So yeah, look at the Destiny community. Yeah. So Falcor blames it on Unity Engine uh, that they have, which is like a weird offshoot of Unity. I know when I was looking into it, my computer has like 64 or maybe 128 gigs of RAM, one or the other. I can't remember. See if Thieves uses four gigs. Dude, it could use it's a so much game. more, but it doesn't. Um, and apparently another thing that I don't think that this isn't the big problem for me because I, I, I had the game running for a while. Every time you boot it up and easy and I cheat scans the entire hundred gigabytes of game to see if oh. you changed anything. Oh, so, that's crazy. That's yeah. like with that other game. I can't remember what game it was. We tried to play it recently and it, there was oh it was elden ring for pc yeah elden ring for pc i booted it up and this i could i literally tracked it down with process um scanners and found that their anti-cheat was essentially stealing all of my cpu wow. every so many cycles yeah. causing it to jitter and i'm like there's nothing i can do about this yeah, it's ridiculous. so that's probably one of the big things going on with Sea of Thieves is easy anti-cheat screwing things up. On top of that, my speculation is that on PS5, they're using the direct storage uh, feature because the game has got so much going on. They're constantly having to put things aside and load new assets from storage. And on PS5, that's storage is basically RAM. So whatever, mm. it's fine. On my PC, no, storage is in storage. You got to bring it through the CPU, put it in the GPU, and then access it. And they're not they're not utilizing all the space, which maybe it's a Unity Engine thing, but I, I doubt it. Like, I don't, I, I just feel like it, it should be pretty easy to say, oh, the computer has this much RAM or VRAM. Okay, use all the VRAM basically and use half the RAM. That's why I have it. No. No. So it's, it's really frustrating. And long story short, I brought my PS5 downstairs because I was like, let's let's try using that with a capture card because I want to play this game on stream. It, it like despite the problems, it's the only game like itself. And I haven't played it in like a year regularly, so I want to play. But I discovered a while back that I don't like having PS5 downstairs because we had it downstairs for my wife to play like SnowRunner with me on stream. And well, I really missed having it upstairs because the PS5 is both our Blu-ray player and it is my like actual like decompressing just playing a random game on the couch device with no like oh maybe i should have been recording that or like yeah. you know just fully unplugged yes complete relaxation mode so right now my technical difficulties from earlier are me working on using two capture cards going to a laptop laptop being my streaming device because when i was testing sea of thieves over the weekend was that over the weekend? Whenever I was testing Sea of Thieves last, I discovered that I can play the game with minimal stuttering. Still stuttering, but it's it doesn't make me want to cry uh, if I'm not trying to also use my computer to stream. So, which means that it's all CPU issues. Like, because I have a really good 2080 Ti, it's never overloaded. So the problem is single threading on the CPU because my CPU is AMD and has like 12 cores, I think, 24 thre like threads. Like it yeah. it can handle a lot and it boosts really high. Like this is all... If the application only does it single threaded, then you get that. Yeah, I, I can't change anything about that. So it's like I'm not bottlenecking. Their software is bottlenecking. Yeah. And it's like the only game that does this. So... Yeah, like I was I was one of the things I was excited for about getting fiber wasn't just, oh, now I can like stream and have good podcasts and, and, and stuff like that. I was like, I could finally play Sea of Thieves again because I was, I was actually experiencing all the rubber banding from packet loss. 
and them not trusting the client. They trust the server, which yep. is way worse than stutter. But now I'm like, oh, man, this game is really doing terribly. That's unfortunate. But there's no that other game like why, it. And that is Fair. why. Yeah, there really is it. They should do a two. And I, and I really think they are. Like, the evidence is there in but it, if, it's probably gonna be like a year or two listen to me see if these oh. developers if you land the premise of your game not this bullshit that you have right now going on not this whole oh live your fantasy but also there is no freaking progression there's there's nothing it is a nothing burger mm-hmm. if you land the actual delivery of your of your game and plan to expand upon that by adding other C's. Give me a fucking world to discover. Do anything but what you've done. You know what's so funny? Because I love I love the idea. Yeah, it's unique. It's great. The, 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 the integration of what you do in that game is great. And you know what's really just hilarious to me? Rare designed some of the best games Mm -hmm. of their genre for world area building interacting with that area and you know what every single one of their games had that was the premise of the game collecting something collecting coins collecting music notes collecting and going around do you know how simple it would have been to just hide or do a hundred secret map parts and then hide a hundred thousand gold special doubloons around the world it would have been that people can just go nothing no no that's the thing that's crazy is like they think oh but there's no point in doing that they can they have all these things to do literally eric their games were designed literally through literally collecting shit Literally, you could have made an entire game system based on that. Oh my god! Are you are you one of the ten co- coin holders yeah. at the end of the, at the end of the week? Yeah. Are give, you give them a title? Yeah. Do something. Like, or do the s- map parts. Bro. Make the map parts extremely hard. Add new sub areas with varying levels of getting the map parts. Do you know do how long co- I spent coins, to get all the notes and Eric. puzzle pieces in Banjo Kazooie? Eric, seasonal notes. You, Dude, if you I'm hold a, you. if you hold, if you hold a coin the entire week for a certain Dude, season, you I, get skins. You get a tight bro. There's, you know, Rare, and the only thing that drives me insane is that Rare literally put themselves on the map by implementing these features that we're talking about right now. That is what they designed their game. Every single game except for this one around. So like. This is one of the things. This is why they have to be working on a second one. There cannot be a game designer on their staff Eric, right now. With the things that they do. <laughs> it's it's a harsh. battle pass sim. It's a battle pass yeah, sim. It is. Dude, are you kidding me? That's not yeah, a game. It's, it's not. It's crazy. It's And Anthony, it's been like this since I played the game. It has been a battle pass sim since we've played it, and it has not gotten better. Now, I... I I defy you to tell me that some oh, of the things that they've added there are, are not just features that you would add to another game that actually is full fledged. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, I will say there is one thing that I would say, and this is not coming from Anthony, who is uh, far more of an advocate. This game creates situations that are more unique than any other game that I've played. The, the interplayer, like, Things that happen in this game, you can't have it anywhere else. Simply I don't that. happen like they do yes. in any other game, and that's not to say that they're well implemented. <laughs> it's not to say that like Rare isn't like inhibiting those correctly or doing the right things, but that part of the game, everybody went and said, "I want to be a pirate," and was like, "This game is shit." At I want to be a pirate simulator. What when you get into the game and have these interesting you situations that occur, you, you live it, yeah. and then you're like, there's this dopamine and cool rush that happens, mm-hmm. and you're constantly trying to find that again. The problem right now with the game, the biggest problem 
is that every design choice that they have made since I've been on and off playing this game doesn't reinforce that core idea that makes Dude, the game so unique they and developed special. themselves into a hole. Dude, for like three, at least three years, they had the brig, the three-player ship, which was faster than the sloop and faster than the galleon for like three to four years. They just fixed that. They no. just went and did a pass and made all of the like ships properly balanced. Why would it? Why? 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 Why couldn't? Why does it take that long? Why does it take that long? Also, they still have a NDA private test server, not a public test server like everyone else does. Because why would you be so freaking like? Either someone has an insane ego there. Or there's like nobody working there. Like, I don't. Anthony, I, and they're here's rare, the though. I, I honestly think it's a part of the reason that they are so interestingly choosy over their updates is likely because in mid-development, they switched from a proprietary engine to Unreal 4. Big mistake. And I don't think Huge. a lot of their team had the same understanding of unreal four as they did of their own proprietary engine one and two i think they made a lot of decisions to get it out the door in unreal four that were that are simply mass monumental undertakings to fix after the fact mm. it's fair they're heavily limited I, by unreal yeah 100 percent. anthony your game's just fucking broken man i'm sorry no i i know it's broken but can't experience anything like it anywhere else you can't i get that it's just it's so it's sad more than anything honestly because i would like and here's the thing i've gone back and played multiple times and the times that i get to play like when the everything just lands together it's It's so magical of an experience yeah Mm -hmm. and you understand why they are who they are why they've been part of our childhood why they should be part of this next generation's childhood i just feel like this is such a squandering of a legacy i honestly just want them to scrap everything and do a new banjo kazooie game well they don't they they can i know not after not after nuts and bolts i can never go back agreed but I, I so wanted... apparently, and I wasn't really aware of this, but in like the Captain Falcor videos, he talks about how Sea of Thieves is like Microsoft's flagship now. They yeah. released what is it, Game Pass, with Sea of Thieves as the very yeah. first game. Yeah. It is like their poster child. So what? that gives good hope for Sea of Thieves too. The game is literally microtransaction hell. It really is. It's kind of funny. The last time Eric and I went and played, we were like, what is the coolest like cosmetics we can earn? Because like the only progression here is cosmetics. Can't. What's the coolest thing we can earn? None of it is as cool as something you can buy. None of and it. And here, here's one of the biggest problems too with Sea of Thieves and why collectibles should have been such an important part of that game. And is so much more integrated. And it didn't have to be a cosmetic collectible, just like collectibles in general, like finding things, finding map pieces, finding pieces of wood. It didn't really matter what it was, but the fact that number went up and I've collected something in the world by doing something was important. And they did not give that in anything but logs that didn't have any like bearing. Instead, they made it all cosmetic mm. rewards. You cannot make a game where the collectible and progression in the game is cosmetic and then allow people to buy cosmetics. You just can't. No, because it's pay to win. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the game is about collecting cosmetics. Yeah. And that's okay. Here's the thing. If Sea of Thieves added a bajillion cosmetics that were all distinctly different, all required different things, and you went around the world collecting them yeah. and different challenges and stuff like that, which they've like halfway done, that would be fine as long as you could not buy any cosmetics. The minute you can buy cosmetics though, why, what yeah. is the, the other stuff The minute you for? can buy cosmetics that you can definitely tell there has been actual artistic effort 
into making superior to yes. what you can earn in game. Dude, that is when you have a problem. The funniest part is that like Hippo TC, I, I still watch him to this day. He's like one of the best Sea of Thieves uh, streamers there is. He's just a great content he creator is. too. He has an insane amount of the uh, like paid for currency because being a partner, they just give it to him, Shit, hoping yeah. that he'll use it to buy the stuff in the pay for shop and show it off and he when people ask about it he's like yeah i don't I'm like any of that. their stuff like you why, this is my guy he looks like a pirate i'm I, I i if i like it i would show it to you but i don't like it so i'm not going to but also it has no intrinsic value right like here's the thing a lot of people when they go in and there are there are games where i would even buy a cosmetic but guess what they never have more value than the cosmetic you earn. This yeah. is why I almost never do um, the uh, the what's it called in World of Warcraft? Mount like hunts. the uh, transmogs. Mm. It's like, why do I want a transmog? I earned this in the raid or in the dungeon or in this. That's what I'm going to look like. I don't care if it's a hodgepodge of stuff. Like transmogs, cosmetics that you earn always have more intrinsic value. They feel better. You I earn. have a debate for you for that. Okay. So, agree. If I earn something in raid versus I leveled up something and it matches my aesthetic, I'm going raid. It just makes sense. That being said, there are things that you have earned in previous raids that mean something more to you now than, they, That's fair. than, than the current raid does. For example, Brintal, the bo the uh, the Bone Arbiter's axe from Wrath of the Lich King, I still use that shit. Why? Because when I I remember we were, <laughs> I remember it was it was literally like uh, raffle stomping through the entirety of the Ice Crown Citadel experience. But I remember the first fight we had, it dropped, and I was like, I need it. I, I mean, I might as well, right? Dude. And I need so, it, and I got it. So, um, I mean, there's a f it's I, always been. I agree, but let me give the counter to that. Hmm. Or my counter, at least. And this is not a, a, this is good. This is more of, if WoW was designed correctly, hmm. shouldn't that piece get a replacement in each expansion? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That being said, <laughs> look. So so yeah. I'm not saying WoW does that. You're entirely right. Yeah. Previous expansions have gear that ha will all almost always have more intrinsic value than anything we have in the current expansion or future mm. expansions simply because of what the game was like then, even with cool and factor. how it was yeah. had to be earned yeah right if the game were designed correctly and each expansion and this is my testament of like new expansions simply don't have as much value I'm not saying they aren't as good I'm not saying the old ones are better or worse because you know gameplay wise the the new ones can be better but there is a missing value to the itemization at least in newer expansions than older expansions right i agree the gear because of randomness because of how they roll stats because of how you have upgrade systems because of how they they roll like just randomly roll stuff and they have so much of it bosses don't have set drops like they used to they have different tier sets now because of how all of that is done nowadays and how the tier set isn't the best set. O oftentimes yeah. you can find an arena piece and upgrade it to eight That's out of better. eight or whatever. Yeah. That'll actually be better for your stats. Because of that, the gear now matters less. You don't go to this one boss and farm him 10 times to get his one specific piece because it's so cool, because it has such value to you. You don't get that experience of trying to earn it working through over and over again and reinforcing that I'm going to this place for this. You don't go, oh man, I remember the Kael'thas fight, not because Bro. 
not because Bro, that fight of any other reason tough. than I wanted the Phoenix mount, right? Ugh. And guess what? I didn't even get the Phoenix mount, but the Phoenix mount has such an intrinsic value in my head because I remember doing Kel'Thas every single week and being like, maybe it'll drop. Maybe, maybe we'll get it. Get ashes. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll get, get ashes. ashes. Yeah. Let's go. We're going to kill Kel'Thas. Killed Kel'Thas hundred plus times. Yeah. But like, that was what added value to that. So when somebody got... When we when you'd go to the bank and see somebody on Ashes of Alar back then, you'd be like, dude, that's cool. That's really dope. that type of value doesn't exist in any item in the game right now. Fair. There's no gravitas. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that doesn't sad. mean that, that oh, doesn't mean God. <laughs> and to all those listening, that doesn't mean that the gameplay is bad. It doesn't mean that the game no. is bad. It doesn't mean it's not fun. It doesn't even mean that they should go back to that because the you know there's a lot of grind. Bad. Yes, the reward system is bad. There's a piece of it that is missing a value like, proposition. It's hilarious it that I went and did the pre-patch and got the pre-patch gear. And I got all get it up. And then still, not not right away, but at level like 73 or wait, what level are we max at? 80? Yeah, so like, like level 80. 73. Oh, you replace that's all of it. better than my last one, but I have the set bonus. Yeah. It's okay. Oh, wait, no, that one's better too. Oh, that one's better. No. Oh, wait, that could replace no. my whole set now. Like, Your entire set has to go. It's like, well, what was the point? I It's like, I Why look I really cool. I would, I wanted that pre patched gear to last me till I go and do like mythics or raiding, but it didn't. Yeah. And it now I look like respect, a hodgepodge. It does not respect the effort that any player puts in because at the end of the day, this game is about imme like immediate gratification. Oh yeah, yeah. Immediate gratification. Which the funniest so thing is, you. This is why I will say it forever. If the bike is fun to ride, you've solved that problem. Immediate. Mm. They they have that immediate gratification embedded into modern WoW because the bike was not fun to ride for a long for, time. For sometimes, yeah. Now exactly. the bike is fun to ride. Time. So stop with this stupid stat rolling random crap every freaking piece of armor should have one freaking set of stats and they 100%. should all be unique and in like i'm mean, not unique as in like oh they're legendary but like freaking people simplify don't it. want to like or grind the same piece of content like they used to so no. And people don't want to work as hard for that. They want everything they do in the game. And this is a kind of corollary to how I like why I think RuneScape is still so relevant in the MMO space. In WoW, every time you run a dungeon, you get some box marked off that can help you with improve your gear nowadays. Mm -hmm. Every run progresses you forward just a little bit that progression is largely inconsequential and it's missing a lot of the gravitas that we've talked about where previous expansions you might have to do you might pick a pick a boss from uh, you know the twins from the sunwell or or something like that and you need a piece of gear off them guess what you're going to twins every week until you get that piece of gear because that's it. That's your upgrade. That upgrade is the difference between you being like fifth on the charts and like second or first on the charts, you know, right? Every piece of gear that you got at that level was so big because the levels between each raid and dungeon were huge. So you would do that dungeon a hundred times to get that trinket if it was your best in slot trinket you because you needed it you needed it yeah. because that was oftentimes the difference between you performing badly and you performing five times better sometimes yeah i remember i needed now, i needed moreau's lucky pocket watch from oh, yeah. karazan to make any form of transition over from kara to um shadow uh, not shadow fang oh my god what the fuck uh what is that what is that called um oh, the, the, the naga the, the depths? Yeah. Uh, what, what shadow was that? Fang no shadow no, fang? Um, no 
Vosh, what was it called? Oh, Vosh, Vosh's place. Vosh, what was it called? It was, she was in, oh my gosh. Oh the name. no, How are we forgetting it's this? gone from us, my friends. Lost in the, in the tables of time. Oh my God, ahead, I'm so sorry. This is Coil completely Fang different. Deaths? Might have been Coil Fang. CFD? CF, I think C, feel I feel like, like CFD is like, like close. Yeah, that was like right. Serpentine Cavern in Coil Fang Reservoir. There were three places there, remember? One was Coil Fang Depths, yeah, one was Coil Fang Prison or prison. something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one was Coil Fang Reservoir. So the dungeon the is Coil, Coil Fang Reservoir. Reservoir. Yeah. And oh. all of that was inside of the Serpent Shrine Cavern. Fucking hell, dude. And like you needed to grind and do all these things. And because you invested time, effort, meaning, intent into a singular thing, when you got that thing, the dopamine rush was insane. It was you huge. felt rewarded. Yeah. And then when you go in and did your next dungeon, did your next raid, you could immediately see an effect of every piece of upgraded gear that you got. And it felt important. It felt better. You know what, guys? I know this is a freaking deviation. You know what I'm really sad about? What? I didn't get to keep the Sun Eater transmog from... Uh, from Oh, from Pickle? From Pickle. Oh, it's okay. gone. So, like... There's a way to, I think, bring those bring it back. I don't know it's if not there the is. Same character, I don't think though, it's, I think it's, it's not the problem. same character. That's the problem. Yeah, I think you can bring pickle. Juice so back. I, I have, I have all of my warrior transmogs though. I, I have Pepe's shroud of of uh, and displacement and everything. Again. It's gone. Weird. I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a way to get them back. Sun Eater is so dope. Sun Eater is really dope. And just thought about it, and I was like, oh man, I used to like, I used to bitch and moan about like these weapons and everything and now there's not a single weapon under the under the sun that i'm like oh man yeah. i really want from like any of the expansions right now i like, mean even if you did want one the amount of effort you have to put in to achieve it nowadays before it gets upgraded or replaced mm -hmm. is so minimal that oftentimes you're just rolling a loot machine you're rolling you're, you're pulling doing a slot a, machine. the slot machine yeah. every time you kill a boss and you'll get a marginal upgrade sometimes and you'll live with that. It's not, you're not earning a piece. And that is where I feel my, my only stint on this. Uh, and then we'll move to Nat's new mm. game of the week, which I know he wants to Before talk about. Before that though, I okay. remembered something. No. Yeah. Shoot. So I was reminded cause I saw that I forgot someone randomly followed me. Uh, when I was testing out Sea of Thieves, um, there's this event that has the best stuff. And I was like, you know what, whatever. This is a good test. I'm going to go over there. I'm on my way there, mm -hmm. and there's another sloop there fighting this giant new, like, uh, tin cannon ship that has a, a cannon that shoots a fireball in the front that lights everybody on fire, <laughs> and it has a skeleton crew that if you take over the ship they're now your skeleton crew and they fight for you it's it's okay. it's really cool and really incredible and it's like a four layer ship it, it it's so cool um but i go over there cuz i'm cuz there there is a chest of fortune on board and if you collect 30 of them per season so i think it's at like 90 now you unlock the new cosmetics i haven't even unlocked the first 30 <laughs> so i'm like Okay, I'm going to go over there because, like, at the least, you can just, like, hop on, sneak down to the bottom of the ship, grab the chest, and run away. And I was like, why not? Right. Why not? Um, I'm showing up, and that sloop sinks. I'm like, wow, what a noob. Uh, so I go over, and I'm like, well, they had so much loot. What in the? They had a ton of loot, and most of it was on a rowboat. And I was like, maybe I should put the rowboat and dock it to my boat, get rid of my rowboat, and then just go. Uh, or actually, my first thought was maybe I should take the rowboat and sneak away, like be super sneaky, you know, just get out of here because it has mm -hmm. the chest of fortune on it. Um, so I, I expected they stole it from the ship, but like they stole it and they just doesn't it doesn't make sense. But they're, not they're obviously sense. a noob. 
right? Because they just sunk with all this stuff on board. Like, what is happening? Um, so I end up harpooning all the stuff, and then I start to leave, and there's a sloop coming at me, and I'm like, well, that's weird. And I'm like, I'm struggling. Like, my computer is not performing well right now, okay? <laughs> there's more stutter than normal, because I'm, I'm literally testing stuff. I'm trying to push the limits. And I'm like, well, it has to be one noob, whatever. I'm going the wrong way. And so I start going towards a, towards a port so I could like sell stuff. And then they cut me off real fast. I'm like, huh, I didn't know they could do that. And then they start shooting at me and I'm shooting at them. And then they start landing shots from really far away. And then a dude comes over and I'm like, I'm going to go over, you know, like I'm going to get to you before you get to me, man. And you're like, I'm ahead of you. Um, it wasn't a noob. No. And it was I could have told you that. It was two guys named Boxy Fresh and Beer to Get It. They oh are two of the most popular Best. fucking streamers on Sea of Thieves. And I was not ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> I got wrecked. <laughs> oh yeah, they're they're rocked. good. And you got and rock. And the chest of fortune was a was from some other uh event the chest of fortune was actually still on board that ship so there were two oh. available there were two available and so it was so nuts. after they killed you you went to go see their stream i went to see the stream death because I, I i literally at the very end was like i saw it say boxy fresh i was like wait boxy is that you and he says like in the flesh baby and i was like <laughs> it doesn't even sound like you because he said it in like a crazy voice so I had to yeah. go and double check and I was like, that was him. And then I like rewound both of their streams. I had them both up like simultaneously uh, and I synced them up and I, I had to rewind farther than I expected because they tucked on a guy who was doing like a, a, a what is it? Like a fortune. A, I don't know. It was a really big event at a skull fort where you get a ton of loot. And apparently that guy had already gotten all the loot from this big event. So he already had a chest of fortune. They let him do all the work for this one. And then they took all of his stuff. And then um, Boxy's internet goes out. Beard's like, it's okay. I'm getting all the stuff. But then the giant ship that we're talking about, this new event, decides to go and fight Bo uh, boxy and beer to get in ship without them initiating usually pve needs you to initiate for them to fight you they didn't they just started pummeling him the devs decided to say yeah. fuck you and then beer to get in like falls off the ship and the ship sinks like they had oh, some yeah. real bad technical <laughs> luck there that made them look like noobs and and the worst part about it is if i had taken my first thought and just yeah, gotten just on the gone. rowboat taken the loot and left they could they, you you can't find a person on a rowboat like yeah. once you get deep enough into the ocean there's no finding them and that's one of those there's cool no things way. that the yeah. game does well which is that like you could find them but guess what a random person in the ocean on a tiny rowboat not easy ain't to happening. find ain't yeah. happening so it's just not easy and it's just crazy that like such an epic experience happened when I was just barely doing anything. You were just out in the fucking world, my guy. Yeah, and that's something that the, the no no game can do. A hundred percent. Unfortunate. But yeah, now what's the new game you've been playing? It's not new technically. Um, so I've been playing Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. Um, guys, it's really good. It's hard. Um, <laughs> there have been multiple times where I have been playing this game and I was like, guys, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so there's these things called Xerxes coins, right? <laughs> and you use them to buy um, stuff from this merchant, right? And part of the completionist part of this game is that you buy everything from this merchant, you find all the things, and you just, like, you beat the game, right? And I've always felt that I've been a completionist. So I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and get these coins. There is a level of platforming that I never want to be good at. I just, like, there's, a, there, so 
Wait, you wait, Nat. You've done the White Palace, right? No. What? Yeah. Dude. Wait. So you've never actually finished? I've never finished Hollow Knight. You've no. never finished Hollow no. Knight. See, no. the thing is, I felt that way, Nat, for years. Oh, yeah. God. See, it's so like, like Eric, like I know, loves like you never Mario know Maker, game. right? I'm I like, I, well, I can't do that, that dude. I don't want I to. I can't stand it. So, like, at a certain point, yes, I will get it. Not to say that I won't eventually get there, because there have been there have been nights where I have been on a Hollow Knight section for three hours. I mean, you have to do the white. I will eventually get there. I feel you, like no, no, I'll no. Get no. Back. This is different than like Anthony being like, I don't like Mario Maker because <laughs> one of your, if not your favorite game, is Hollow Knight, yeah. and you haven't completed yeah. it. Yet. Uh, most of my favorite games, I have never completed. Just saying. <laughs> That's also fair, that's I guess. Sad. You should really finish your game. Yeah, no, that, it's that's called life. It's not my fault. That's fair. I think that's fair. That's actually, yeah, that's okay. fair. Never mind. Okay. Um, but yeah, th- this game is hard. It's not just the puzzle aspect of it either. Like, it challenges me. And like I haven't been challenged in a bit by a game and this one definitely does it like it goes it goes all the way for it like it does not pull any punches in terms of just like making you look at a at a puzzle be like you're not gonna get this <laughs> sorry you got to figure it out or you're gonna have to look it up on the internet and feel really bad about having to look up a guide for a video game as a 35 year old how i feel like you? some of those are bad design wait did y'all no, watch no did y'all... No, no, no 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 so like there's like certain aspects of it where you're like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna look up a guide, but there's Tetris. other parts of it. No, not Tetris. Not Tetris. There is a mechanic where um, they introduce the double jump to you, right? And usually, whenever the game introduces double jump, the level of complexity for your puzzles goes up, right? But not so much so that you don't feel empowered doing it. And there are moments like that in this game, but there are puzzles. There are jumping puzzles in this game that make me want to cry. (laughs) (laughs) From frustration. (laughs) Because on the way there, you fight enemies that like you can't avoid like some form of damage from unless you play like patiently. And I'm not, I'm not a patient player. I'm just not. So, you get there and you have like you have two flasks left right and you have a huge health bar by this by this point but you fail so many times <laughs> you fail so many times yes. and then sometimes you fat finger your flask so you hit it twice and so oh. now you're completely screwed <laughs> it's funny now because i'm outside of the experience (laughs) yeah but um all that being said this game is awesome they're like it's (laughs) my favorite part holy shit i almost forgot there is a bad guy in this game that i'm like i have a huge man crush on Oh my no. god, it's insane. He's so fucking badass. He's so edgy. And he's like, he is literally Virgil from Devil May Cry, but older oh, and like with like the silver going on. He's dope as fuck. So his name is um I'm not really spoiling anything because the game's been out for a while. Fuck y'all for thinking. Um his name is uh Varum, and he's the white lion, right? And he has this single blade that's sheathed all the time, right? And he Uh has a move that he holds a position and it creates an orb, it like displaced from him that cuts you up like a thousand times, right? Who does this remind you of? Virgil from fucking Devil May Cry. But anyway, he has this move that whenever you're fighting him, because you fight him like multiple times throughout the game. And on one of the fights, he uses his super move, which like creates lines through your entire screen. And if you if you're not within an empty space, you get hit. And when you do get hit, it's the hardest shit I've ever seen. It's so cool. 
oh god i'm not even gonna like try and describe it but like he he has like the anime eye trailing shit he like tracks you and then he fucking vanishes annihilates you he's so dope oh my god ash knows he's fucking hot so i was in the middle of fighting him and i and i i knew i could beat him but i was like guys i really want to see this move a few more times you're like ah maybe i'll get hit once because it was so good guys it's so good the fight is so good in the sense that like he's using time powers you're using time powers at this point in time it's like a back and forth like he rewinds time and gets some health back you you um like time delay yourself so that you do multiple attacks at the same time it's so cool the idea is it it's a great implementation the only problem is there's not more of arm like I the, need an I need another need dope a- attack. Whoever designed this game, huge anime fan, because hey. every single fight has a parry mechanic. Like every single boss fight has a parry that, like when you in like when you do it, it gives you an anime s cutscene. Like big ass snake that shoots like red beams of like. Uh, pure energy and you can parry one of them and it causes like this dope ass cutscene I can't sing any more pra- praises for this game it's so good you need to play it oh. that is nice you know it's always good when the uh, when the thing you're fighting starts pulling out your own moves oh for like, sure oh, oh my god a second. <laughs> when, he, when he starts like so you start shooting your bow at him and he like reflects them back at you and you're like fuck <laughs> so good guys you have to you have to give it a shot like it's a little clanky a little clunky at the beginning but like you realize why it is so like why it's a little stunted at the beginning because they've already built the game based on knowing that you're going to be flying by the end of the game yeah. like there's a there's a move that i won't tell you about because i don't know if you're going to play it or not but near the end of the game they introduce another game that completely changes how you fight Oh, oh, anyway, there was a docu series called High Score that you reminded me of on Netflix. Uh-huh. I had no idea that games that we played, like a Zelda game that I could never beat when I was a kid, had like teams of people that you could call the phone number. Yeah, on the fucking thing yeah. to help you get through it. Yeah, they'd well, be like, "Hey, like, where are you at?" Matt, Matt was talking about the original Devil May Cry. And so you me to, and yeah. my cousin mm-hmm. played Devil May Cry one and two in the in a series of two nights. We stayed up all night the first night and beat Devil May Cry one, and then Bro. we slept for like eight hours and stayed up <laughs> all the second night and played through Devil May Cry two. Devil May Cry two is abysmally bad. Devil yes, May Cry is. one is probably one of the best game like flute one of games the ever. Best. Made. Hacks, like, like action, essentially hack they ever. had a an old uh like tomb raider there there's a lot of speculation but essentially there was a game they didn't finish they think it was probably a tomb raider game and they didn't know what to do with it and it was like a mix between Res- a resident evil that was unfinished and maybe a tomb raider that was unfinished or something like that so and then the guy who made angles. resident evil yeah he took and created devil may cry one in Devil May Cry 1, they don't explain any of the buffs or debuffs because with the game came a manual that explained all of the items, mm-hmm. debuffs, and buffs, and everything else. Yeah. So, like, this idea of a tertiary, this same thing happened with, like, King's Quest. King's Quest has an anti-pirating built in to the game where there is a puzzle that uses a code from your box manual to solve it yeah your box manual god i miss those right like that's crazy Uh, why why is it that i can think back on those books fondly like what what is it about that material or it's not nostalgia it brings the game into real life yeah i i think it is one of the younger one is the 
the more you're able to, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the term for it, where it, um, you just are able to suspend disbelief. So like the mm. younger you are, the more you're able to just suspend disbelief and kind of blur the lines. So for example, a lot of times when you're younger, you don't care about graphics. Why? It's not because the graphics are good or bad. It's just that you suspend the idea of graphics and they just are what they are, right? You will play a bad game as a kid that is technically bad, but remember it fondly if you beat it and just had fun while playing it, even if it was bad, right? Mm -hmm. And that's... I think that's just human nature is that kids don't have a benchmark, right? They don't have a good thing already ingrained into them, right? So they don't care about that. They don't have a thousand games that they've played that they're going to be like, oh, I've played this other game that does the same thing that's 20 times better. Therefore, this one's bad. They're going to be like, oh, I've only played like three games even remotely like this. I guess this is how some of them are fair kids have no kids taste, have no taste. <laughs> and then ash also saying he is hot can't confirm ash knows what's up um but yeah i think a uh-huh. great example of that is like josh straight strife hayes his videos mm. where he goes back and like does full breakdowns of entire old games whether or not they were actually good or bad mm. and there are are some of them that were actually terrible, but when I remember them, I'm like, I didn't remember those parts. Man, so, I need to go back and do that for Golden Sun. I mean, on a completely different side of thinking is that you've probably heard that uh, expectations are the thieves of joy, right? Oh, yeah. Expect- and so, Well, comparison is a theft of joy. Both, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I would argue that it's not just being young, it's that when you're young, you don't have the capability of having expectations Mm -hmm. now like i said superman and lois we expected it to be bad Mm -hmm. and it's actually really good is it really good well rotten tomato says it's actually pretty good yes but like if we expected it to be really really good maybe we would be in the 17 percent that don't like it you know 100 and so perhaps if you can figure out as an adult how to release your expectations like i went to a thing once where this dude was really great at talking and he was like he brought up expectations i think he like asked what what are your expectations for this event and some people shared some people didn't and then he was like okay those that's all great that's all great i want you to like forget about that i can't remember how he did it but he he helped people to understand as adults like that may or may not happen but if all you're thinking about is that you're not going to experience things. So you're not going to, the, yep. what happens will not be available to you. And, and that's because in the back of your mind, you're, you're like, well, when is, when is what I expect to happen going to happen? So you're not enjoying what's actually happening. And I think maybe that sort of thing somehow happens to me with movies. Cause in general, like I know a bad movie, but like most movies I enjoy. Cause I just like, I just like draw into I just, it with a clean slate. Completely You're clean. Like, I'm like, I'm I am yeah. here to be in your world, and all I care about is what you tell me. What yeah. I think, what I've experienced beforehand, doesn't matter. Right now, I am dr- daydreaming. It's like I'm asleep, and this is the dream. Thank you. Push play. Yeah. Like that's how I experience movies. And it's it's awesome. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's a superpower in a lot of ways. For sure. I don't think so. I think it's a simple power. I, I think it's a simple not. power. I have you been can hammer it and do it, dude. Eric, what have, what what is what has been ailing you this week, my friend? <laughs> ailing wrap, you? Wrap wrap us up because oh, you, you I said... I have a, so a lot of that was really just the Adobe stuff, and so I, this week a lot of what I've been doing is relearning. I knew a little bit about DaVinci Resolve, but I actually had to go in and you know get that every time you get into a program for the first time, you're going to run into small caveats and things that just aren't how you're used to them. 
So I went through and did all that. I watched a ton of tutorials, videos, started really working in DaVinci Resolve, started getting used to the node system in Fusion so I can start doing some motion graphics mm. for things like an intro. Um, I'm going to try and redo our intro with some new uh, motion graphic in the, to some degree. Um, maybe I'll create an outro. That way we can have those on the, the channel again. I find them fun. I don't actually know if people like them. However, our previous video that has no intro um, also has our highest uh, watch rate over the time what that it's been out. Fuck? So maybe the no intro is the way to go. Maybe I no intro is way to go. I don't think YouTube <laughs> so, likes intros in terms of. Yeah, they they typically they typically don't unless they're like super high effort. Mm. Um, but maybe what I'll do is I'll do an outro instead. Yeah, there we go. Everybody has an outro. Because the the last frame thing really isn't checked mm -hmm. that much for YouTube videos. Well, like, um, I'm, I'm, there was literally, I don't know if it was a whole video, but Linus Tech Tips wanted to get rid of the intro because of the algorithm. But yeah. their loyal fan base was like, dude, no, no I, I, we love the intro. You got to keep that. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, screw YouTube. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is fair. If we had an audience big enough to do that, then I'm... I'd be we go for it. Yeah. And it might be something we do on the live stream and then just have it as a separate video that I put as like the intro on like the top banner or something. Yeah. Um, Are you using markers I'll... for chapters? Uh, I did not yet. So a lot of that is auto imported from like Riverside. Riverside has its own markers. Cool. Mm. Um, but I don't know if I found them in DaVinci. You just, I didn't see them like I'm in. used to. Okay. If you're on the timeline, you tap yeah. in and then it's a marker okay. and you can name it. And then when you go to export, you have to export directly to YouTube and have markers become chapters. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Riverside does their own markers. I just have to, I did not see them and I didn't look for how to turn them on because I was kind of in a time crunch. It took me like all of Friday and all of Saturday to, to get figure all the, the things worked yeah. out. So yeah, 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 yeah. by, yeah. by that time, I was yeah. like, I did, I'm going to get it out because I knew on like I was running out of time before I got busy again. So, mm, gotcha. um, but yeah, outside of that, I am almost I did like my first two or three bosses in uh, RuneScape on the side. And I'm about to start doing some barrows. Let's go. I'm going to start doing my Barrows run, getting my, my raid gear. I'm sorry, Nat. I tried to get him to talk about this while you were doing laundry, but he refused. <laughs> I got my first piece Years of dragon ago. equipment. We live in the high life, Nat. Are We're we? going to be stabbing fools in the wilderness. It's going to be great. going to be great. But honestly, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Barrows runs. I, I've gotten almost everything set up so that I can do Barrows runs, which is a it's a it's an underground ghost dungeon that has four tombs or six tombs or something like that and you have to fight four of these ghost bosses and there there's six of them so you you won't get one of them each time you run and then when you defeat all of them you have a giant chest that kind of drops five or six pieces of high loot and they're usually not really done by people who aren't running Iron Man, but as an Iron Man player, it's actually kind of easier to get Barrow's stuff than it is like gear than it is to get some of the other pieces of gear <coughs> in the game. So it, it kind of like doing that to get your first pieces of gear after the rune set doesn't seem like that bad of an idea. So I'm going to get like a few pieces there and then move on to other stuff. But that's like the first real raid, solo raid type of thing that I'll be doing that'll require like much more advanced mechanics than the few bosses I fought. So, so yeah, I stuck through, through it. it. Yeah. Guys, you know, it'd be cool. We'll do that. Sometime, maybe soon. Maybe not soon. We do the special Yabako episode where all three of us use our PS5s to experience the best that Sea of Thieves has to offer one last time. I guess so. 
The onion. Because I can't. I, I'm. I'm serious. The experience on PS5 is incredible. I think we could have a really good time, and they have some really cool new stuff. Like, I mean, I was describing that ship to you. It is really cool. So my only problem with that is I don't know if I have a good way to record PS5. You use the capture card. I don't have one. <laughs> it took them a while to get. You there. do have a capture card that your camera's plugged into. Yeah, but I have to use that for my my camera. <laughs> See, <laughs> I saw I saw the logic. No, 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 you you record like five hours of you playing a different game, and then you just put <laughs> a replay of your face. Everyone gets a VTuber. <laughs> Everyone gets a VTuber. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Dude, I'd be uh, down with being a VTuber. There is one other yeah. way, which is um, you have a PS app on your uh, computer, on your PC. And that's going to And be you can new. link, you can play over the network. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I've done you that could. before. It's just a little different. I think what I might do at that point is work surprisingly well. Uh, get one of the. There's a bunch of stuff. From if you. That I was going to say, if you ever want to do dual PC streaming someday you will need yeah. one more capture card 100 takes all right that's why it i takes was thinking two. it takes like, two capsule truck capture it takes cards? two one for the camera one for the pc uh that is has its output being uh cloned one output is going to your monitor the clone is going to the capture no, card no 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 you have to put it into a physical format nope and you saw the um I don't know if you've seen it, but Elgato has the new game oh, catcher I did see nano. It. I did see oh? it. Oh do they? Um Yeah. It looks pretty cool. I don't know how it compares to their other ones, but um There's also I know a they just released it. Avermedia, I think A uh, Oh ha yeah, is I a is one. a good competitor to Elgato. Yeah. Who's you know, the who, I, I was that? gonna do some research. I just saw that Elgato had a new one yeah. today. Sorry. The game capture Neo, like N E O, yes. Okay, yeah. Did is that what yeah, you they said? Have a new... I did not think yeah. that's what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Oh, okay. I that's what I think I said. Obviously, <laughs> I, don't... <laughs> I could have said something else and not realized it. But they actually have a whole new line of Neo products that just released, and they they all seem pretty. Oh, interesting. is that what the bundle is? So the Neo is $120, uh, <coughs> and then there's this bundle for $400 that has, like, a mic oh, yeah, and a webcam has... and a light and a 2 by 4 stream deck. Yeah. I like that stream deck, except it doesn't have the audio stuff. And if I was going to... When I get a stream deck, I am uh, i don't know yet whether or not I'm going to replace the Go XLR. I finally use the stream deck on the phone, which is surprisingly awesome. It's actually really good. I yeah. that's what I use too, actually, right now. Yeah. I just don't have a good stand for it yet. Hmm. If you maybe you should 3D print a stand. Nat, did you 3D print stuff? Huh? I would use no, the stand you seem really that you close gave to. me, but it's actually it's a uh I, I don't know if you know, but it's a glorified photo there. holder of me and my wife. So photo holder? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have my the Sonic. You got me a phone stand. <laughs> that's a that's a I controller a, stand. Yeah. Oh wow. I thought it was a phone stand. It's 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 um, a stand for anything. I think it is also well, a phone stand. It, right it's now a it's stand, a stand guys. for our uh, one of our wedding photos. So. Oh. Incredible. Oh. But incredible. I'm so distracted Gentlemen, by this huh? Neo. We should go to bed. I mean, we should get. Uh, <laughs> well, with that. We are going to bed, chat. <laughs> For that, that with been, that, we're going to go. It has been a wonderful somebody. episode of the Tap Haven Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe below. Everything's down in the doobly-doo. We love y'all, and we will catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Bye. Bye. Do -do -do -do. I'm on a walk. Check out Varum.